Today, we're going to talk about the relationship between beginner's luck, magic, and marketing. Broadcasting live from a sacred temple deep in the heart of the Rocky Mountains, this is Success Magica, the FMS Mastermind Podcast, and I'm your host, Nathan Frazier, and we're not going to do the long, drawn-out intro today. We're just going to jump right into it, and this week, we're going to be talking about the relationship between beginner's luck, the long con, magic, and and marketing. And just a fair warning, the beginning of this podcast is going to be a little bit woo, but for those of you who are open-minded enough to sit through a small story about magic, you're going to be rewarded with a very powerful lesson about marketing. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So I've told this story before on the podcast, so I'm just going to skim through it real quick and give a quick refresher about the first time that I ever experimented with with something called sigil magic. And it is, I kind of think of it like a more advanced way of praying. That might be blasphemous. The Christians in the audience might be completely offended. I might lose a couple of listeners, but that's kind of how I view sigil magic. But anyways, the first time that I ever experimented with this stuff, I crafted a sigil and the intent of the sigil was to bring success to a professional relationship between myself and one of my clients. It was to bring wealth to both of us to make our partnership financially beneficial for both of us. And so I created this sigil. I charged it with my intent. I set it out into the universe and I really didn't think anything of it. I was like, okay, that was kind of silly. That was kind of weird, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go to bed now and I'm going to get up and live the rest of my life and see what happens. And then the next day I had completely even forgotten about it. It was like I said, I wasn't really expecting anything out of it. At the time I was not like a uh, very woo type of person. I didn't give very much credit to this type of stuff, but I did it. And then I went about my life. And the next day I went into the office and me and the marketing IT guy were sitting there working on a sales funnel that we were building and the owner of the business like kind of rushes into the into the office interrupts our workflow and he's like guys guys something's wrong with the website I need you to check it out what's going on he's kind of freaking out he's like I don't know what's wrong but something's wrong our reportings we're getting errors in our reporting and what me and the other guy the guy that's in charge of the IT aspect of the marketing we're just kind of looking at each other like what's going on oh no something's broken I'm management by emergency. We're going to put out this fire and it completely distracts from what we're doing. And this sucks. And we ask what's going on. He's like, I don't know. I'm getting these, I'm getting more reports of sales today than we've ever had. We've never had this many sales in one day. So there's got to be something, something's wrong. Something's over reporting or we're getting false sales. I don't know. Something's wrong. Cause this is very abnormal for us to be getting this many reports of sales in a single day. We've never had this happen before. I don't know what's going on please look into it, figure out what's going on. And so the, the guy that's in charge of the IT aspect of the marketing, he opens up the back end of their store and he's going through all the orders. And he's like, no, all these orders are legit orders. These are not, these aren't false reports. This is legit orders. And the owner of the business, the guy that I had cast the sigil, <laughs> the magical sigil for to bring both of us wealth. He's just like, well, that's, weird. We've never had this many orders in a single day. And it's only like one o'clock. It's only halfway through the day. He's like, what the heck is going on? And at that moment, I kind of just, my jaw just drops. I'm just like, what the hell? Like the first time I experimented with this stuff and the next day I come in and it's the most busy sales day that the business has ever had. What, what are the chances? Could this just be a coincidence? And I later learned that this is a common occurrence. A lot of people, when they first experiment with any kind of magic, specifically sigil magic in my case, they have this thing that is basically akin to beginner's luck. It's a, a crazy, undeniable experience that, holy crap, the magic worked. The prayer worked. 
And like I said, as I've gone on and learned more about this stuff, I hear a lot of people saying, yeah, my first experience with this, it was undeniable. It was, it was amazing. And there was no way that I could say that that was just a coincidence, which was very much in line with my experiment or my experience as well. And a lot of people refer to this as beginner's luck. And you've probably heard the term beginner's luck in other aspects of life or in other areas, other situations as well. And the idea of the long con comes to mind. And when I say that, sometimes beginner's luck is faked. Sometimes beginner's luck is crafted, created for the beginner to lure them in, to get them invested, and then to pull a long con on them. And a long con, the concept of a long con is a con artist will come up to you and they'll say, hey man, can I borrow $5? And you're kind of suspicious about it, but you're like, yeah, I'll give him $5. And then the next day he comes back and he's like, here, here's that five bucks back. And yo, here's an, uh, here's an additional five bucks. Thanks for loaning me. Thanks for helping me out. You got me out of a bad situation. I appreciate it. And then a couple days later, a week later, they're like, hey, man, can I borrow 50 bucks? And you're like, uh, I don't know. But he did give me back the $5 and he gave me an additional $5. 50 bucks isn't that much. I probably can trust this guy. You give him 50 bucks. He comes back a couple days later. He's got 50 and he gives you an extra 20. He's like, man, I really appreciate you. You really helped me out here. Take an extra $20 just as a sign of my appreciation. And then eventually he comes back to you and he's like, dude, I, I'm, my rent is due. I'm screwed. I just paid my car payment and I totally forgot that I had rent and I'm 500 bucks short on rent. Can you help me out with 500 bucks and you're like you know 500 bucks is a lot of money but this guy's been good for it every time and i've got the 500 dollars, and I, this dude's been cool i don't want to see him out on the street i'll give him the 500 dollars, and you give him the 500 dollars, and he comes back in a couple of days and he's got your 500 dollars, and he's got an extra 50 on top of it and he's like man i really appreciate you you helped me out you have no idea how much this means to me yada 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 and all good dude happy to help and then a couple of months later, the guy's like, dude, I'm, I'm behind on my car payment and they're going to repo my car and they want $5,000 and you're the only person that I could think of to ask. You've always been cool to me before. Is there any way you can spot me 5Gs? I can hit you back next month, first of the month. I promise I, I've been good for it. You know, you can trust me. Yeah, dude, I can spot you the 5Gs. You spot him the five G's and you never hear from him again. He gave you an extra hundred dollars out of the money you owed it or that you loaned to him before. But when it came down to five G's, you gave him five G's. The dude disappears and takes your five G's with him. That's the idea of the long con. You get somebody emotionally invested or you get somebody their confidence up in the beginning, and then you take them for all they're worth at the end. And in gambling, the concept of the long con and the concept of beginner's luck, they kind of intertwine. You can be new to the game of poker and your buddies bring you in and they're like, hey, this guy's got a lot of money. He can, we can rake the cash in if we allow this guy to win a little bit up front, build his confidence up, and then get him betting big. So you come in, and you're playing, and the whoever's dealing, they kind of fake the luck. They, they tilt the scales in your favor, and they let you win the first couple of hands. And all the other people that are in on the con, they let you win the first couple of hands. And by the third or fourth hand, you're like, man, I'm really up. I'm, I'm, I must be an awesome poker player. And then they actually start trying, and they let you bet more. Now that your confidence is up, you're going to be betting more. And then they just rake all of the money out of your pockets and into their pockets. And that's how the concept of beginner's luck often intertwines with the concept of the long con. And I'm going to date myself with this example, but when I was a kid, we used to go to the arcades, we used to go to the comic book shops, and they had Mortal Kombat 2. When Mortal Kombat 2 came out, it was the coolest game ever. Everybody loved playing it. And Mortal Kombat 2 did an amazing thing with the concept of beginner's luck and the concept of the long con. The first three or four rounds, the first three or four opponents that you would face as you were working your way through the tournament in Mortal Kombat 2 were super easy. You would win the fights with 
relative ease. And then by the time you got to the third or the fourth fight, the third or fourth opponent, then the AI would start cheating. You would both connect your punch at the same time, and the AI would be the one that scored the hit. Or you would try to do a hit that usually would overpower anything else, and the AI would be able to cheat you and beat you. And you would get to the fourth fight, you're halfway up the mountain in the tournament, and then all of a sudden the AI becomes very difficult and starts cheating you and you're already halfway up you can't give up now so you have to pump more quarters in to keep playing and that's how they did it they rigged it in your favor for the first couple of matches and then they rigged it in the favor of the game for the next couple of matches and then they rig it back into your favor if you pumped in a bunch of quarters the ai would let you win again and then they do the same thing over again so you'd win a little bit you'd lose a lot you'd win a little bit you'd lose a lot and it kept you pumping quarters into the machine and so all of that to say back to the initial story of my beginner's luck when I first experimented with sigil magic I can already hear the argument of the Christians in the crowd saying well that was just beginner's luck to lure you in the the evil demonic spirits they allowed you to get some financial success off of doing magic so that you'd get invested in doing magic and then they'd have a foothold on grasping your soul and pulling you into the underworld world and that may very well be the case it might be a long con that's not been my experience so far but i'm willing to play devil's advocate and say for the christians in the audience you might be right i'm not willing to completely rule that possibility out yet but it's not been my experience thus far but that's not the point of this podcast. I'm not here to argue one way or the other on that particular aspect of reality, nature, whatever. The point of it is to understand what this means for your marketing, for your business. And that is this. You need to create a sense of beginner's luck for people who are just entering into your world. People who are potential clients, potential customers, prospects. When they enter your world, the first experience that they have with you should duplicate or replicate the sense of beginner's luck. When people take those first couple of steps into your world, you want to make sure that those first couple of steps are easy to take and rewarding for them. So if their introduction to you is through a lead magnet, you need to make sure that your lead magnet is easy to consume, easy for them to implement, and then gets them an easy win, gets them easy results so that their first experience with you is that sense of beginner's luck. They say to themselves, hey, I just came across this guy or this girl and I downloaded this thing that they said would help me in whatever problem that I'm trying to solve. And I did it. I read it and I implemented it and I got the results right away. It was awesome. I can't wait to see what else this person has for me. And really, you need to make it easy for them every step along the way. It's super important when they first come into your world to give them that sense of beginner's luck, but that needs to carry on throughout every step of the process of acquainting themselves with you and what you have to offer. So signing up for your program, signing up to be a customer, signing up for your continuity offer needs to be easy. Setting up their payments needs to be easy. Your onboarding system, once they've actually paid, once they're ready to start using whatever it is that you sold them, needs to be simple, needs to offer easy wins to get them invested, to get them using the product or the service that you sold them. If they open up the package and they can't figure it out, if they log into the back end of your system and they can't figure figure out how to get their profile set up, it's discouraging. It stops them from trying. It kills all that momentum and then you lose them. So every new step along the way needs to offer some sort of easy win for them, needs to give them that sense of beginner's luck so that they continue on to the next step. And if it ever gets to the point where it's a little bit difficult, a little bit daunting, now they've got the sunk cost fallacy. Now they're already invested. They look back at how far they've climbed up the mountain so far and they don't want to give up now. They see that the top of the mountain is attainable and even if they hit a speed bump, they're already invested so they're gonna keep going but if they hit that speed bump at the very beginning they're not going to continue that journey so at the very beginning of the of each step of the process you need to be programming in 
beginner's luck situations for the people coming into your world. And this is especially true for any kind of content that you're putting out there. If you're utilizing content marketing, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, podcast episodes, YouTube episodes, blog posts, anything like that. If you're creating content, free content to attract people into your world, you need to remember that you're 50 steps ahead of them. You have something called the curse of knowledge. You have all of this knowledge and all of this understanding that they don't. And so a lot of times your content might suffer from the bridge too far syndrome where you're so far ahead of them that it's impossible for them to catch up based off of the free content that you're providing. So you need to dumb down your free content and make sure that it offers those easy wins, that beginner's luck that we've been talking about all episode. You don't want to have the experience where they come into your world and they try to start climbing your ladder, but the bottom rung of the ladder is 12 feet tall and it's impossible for them to reach. So they just give up and they move on and they never get to experience what you have for them. And again, I want to make sure that I'm being clear. You need to have your heart in the right place. This is not about the long con. It's about ensuring their success. It's about making sure that they don't give up before they're able to experience what you have for them, what you can make possible for them. It's a way to keep them coming back for more so that you actually have the opportunity to help them succeed. And while this concept of beginner's luck is important to incorporate at every aspect of the journey, it's most vital at the very beginning stages of any relationship that you're trying to develop with a potential customer or client. So do everything that you can to help rig the game in their favor, to help ensure that they experience beginner's luck, especially at those very important beginning steps. It'll keep them on board, it'll encourage them, it'll build their confidence, it'll make sure that they keep coming back so that they can experience the greater levels of success that you have in store for them in the future. Now, I have a question for you. Tell me about a time that you experienced beginner's luck with something and how did it impact your desire to continue with that new thing that you were exploring? Did beginner's luck encourage you to keep going and did it end up being something that you actually became successful with in the long run? I'm interested to hear your experience. Leave it in the comments down below and as always, if you enjoy this episode, make sure that you subscribe to it. If you know somebody who could get value out of hearing this message, make sure that you send it to him. I'm Nathan Frazier, High Priest of Propaganda. I'm out of here. Deuces. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you're subscribed so you always catch the content we create for you in the future.